This is lesson 7-5, which is graphing other trigonometric functions. Our essential question is how do key features of one trigonometric function relate to key features of other trigonometric functions? So to start out with, we're going to look at tangent. So again, we if we come back to the unit circle, so sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x. So here's a table of values for our tangent. So if we have negative pi over 2, um, here will be, here's our y, here's our x, so 1 over 0 will be undefined. Then we go to negative pi over 3, oh that was negative pi over 2, whoops. <laughs> um, negative pi over 3 is Square root of negative square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. So if we think about negative square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half, the denominators cancel, and we're ending up with negative square root of 3. So that's where that came from, and then so on. So if you graph those, what you're going to get is a graph that looks like this. And what you will notice, um, and we'll talk about key features here in a second, is you can actually relate the tangent graph to both your sine and cosine and where both of those are equal to zero. So the next example says, what are the key features, the domain, the range, the period, the zeros, and the asymptotes of the graph of y equals tangent of x? So our domain, if we look back at our graph, we are going to have vertical asymptotes and if we think about it, so if we look at y equals tangent of x, we know tangent is sine over cosine. So asymptotes always occur where we have zero in the denominator. So we're going to think about where is cosine zero, and that's going to give us our asymptotes. So we're going to have asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, where cosine equals zero. So that's going to be, we can write this in set notation, x cannot be pi over 2 and any value of, so if we add pi or take away pi from pi over 2, so we're going to write it as n pi. So pi over 2 plus pi plus 2 pi plus 3 pi or pi over 2 minus pi, all of those are going to give you your asymptotes. Our range, the graph is going to go up positively and down negatively forever, so that means our range is just negative infinity to positive infinity. Oops. And then the period, period is pi. So you'll notice this is different than sine over cosine, sine and cosine. So um, if we look back at the previous example, so going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 is one period of tangent. So that's a distance of pi. And so the period's going to be pi. Our zeros are going to take place everywhere that sine is equal to 0 because that's our numerator. Okay, so those are the key features of tangent. So the next is how can you use transformations to sketch the graph of the function y equals a tangent of bx? So we're going to talk about how a and b are going to transform tangent. So just like almost every other function we've looked at, a is going to be either a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. So if we look at the graph of y equals 2 tangent of 4x, so the 2 is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So if you look here, our original tangent graph is blue and our transformed tangent graph is orange. So you can see how it's been stretched, it's steeper um, than our original graph. So here if we kind of focus on our original graph, if you're going from your 0 to the asymptote if it has a, a value of 1, you would go halfway between the 0 and the asymptote, and you would go up 1 and down 1. But if it's 2, 
that means you would go halfway between the zero and the asymptote and you would go up two or down two. The four is going to change the period of the graph. So just like with sine and cosine, instead of taking two pi over b, you would take pi over b because the period of tangent is pi. So this would be pi over four. So the period of our orange graph on here is going to be pi over four. So you can see that really shrunk down, horizontally shrunk our graph and we have a way higher frequency. Okay, so the last example is how is the graph of y equals secant of x related to the graph of cosine? So we know that cosine of x is equal to 1 over secant. Or we know that secant is equal to 1 over cosine. So from our graph here, you can see the blue graph is cosine. Secant is going to have asymptotes because we have a fraction. So it's going to have asymptotes wherever cosine is equal to 0. So cosine equals 0 at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So that's why you see those purple asymptotes right there. And then it's the reciprocal. So we have our high points and our low points of cosine. And you can see that the secant graph is coming off of those minimums and maximums that we have there. So this is this whole graph that you're looking at is what it looks like if you have both graphs, but if we just had this the secant graph, it would look something like this. And you can graph these in Desmos to kind of get a feel for what they actually look like. My sketches are not great, but um, it gives you an idea of our tangent, secant, cosecant will also be like this because it's also a reciprocal and cotangent. So all of those you can graph in Desmos to kind of explore what those are going to look like. Okay, let me know.